make short ribs in the Instant Pot. So you're going to need short ribs, and these are of course from Blue Water Creek, and they are 100% grass fed and grass finished. I have what's known as a mirepoix, which is going to be your flavor base for the sauce, and it is um, carrot, celery, and onion that I've just chopped up. This is four cloves of garlic that I've mixed. You're going to need some broth. This is just chicken bone broth. You can use beef or whatever you have on hand. Um, spices. This is coconut sugar that we're going to use to sweeten the sauce. This is a mixture of coconut aminos, which is like a soy-free alternative to soy sauce. Um, it is made from coconut sap, and you can order it online, or you can um, get it at Publix. I will write a blog post for this recipe, and I will link where you can get that online. Um, I put in a tablespoon of fish sauce. Um, fish sauce is used in a lot of Asian cooking, and it just gives food like an umami flavor and a salty bite. And then there are two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar in there as well. This is some spices, this is just dried thyme, dried garlic powder, and dried onion powder. I have a slurry of arrowroot starch and water. We're gonna use that to thicken the sauce. Um, I have some Cabernet. And when it comes to making a recipe that calls for wine, make sure that you buy a wine that you'd be willing to drink. Even if you're not a wine drinker, don't go and buy cooking wine. Um, it's really important for the flavor of the recipe that you use a decent quality wine. I think this bottle was like $7, so I'm not saying you have to go buy a super expensive bottle, just get something that um, is decent, kind of mid-range. And then I'm going to use avocado oil to sear and brown all sides of the short ribs. I have my Instant Pot set to saute mode, and you'll notice it says hot, which means it's ready. And I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon or so of avocado oil. And the way you know when your pot's hot, um, say if you're not using an Instant Pot, when you add your oil, it's kind of going to give it a ripple effect. And you want your pan screaming hot so that the meat doesn't stick. I've also let this sit out for about 30 minutes to come up to room temperature. If you put meat that's fresh out of the refrigerator that's cold into a hot pot, it's going to cause the meat to seize and it's going to be really tough. If you're using more than like three short ribs, say you're making, you have a large family and you're making several, you do not want to crowd the pan because if you do, what's going to happen is you're going to steam the meat and it's not ever going to get like a good golden brown crust on it. So I'm going to sear all sides of this, including the edges and the ends. Um, it's going to take a little while, but I promise it's worth it. to reduce and get a little bit thick and syrupy. Okay, now that that's kind of reduced, I'm going to go ahead and add in the coconut aminos, the fish sauce, and the balsamic vinegar. And then I'm going to do the um, coconut sugar. Okay, now that that's all combined, 
I'm going to turn it off of saute mode. I'm going to add the short ribs back in. And any juices that are left on the plate, make sure you add those back in too because that's loaded with flavor. that you put your um, knob on the top of your Instant Pot to sealing. If you put it to venting, it's just going to let all the steam come out while it's cooking and it's never going to come to pressure and um, it's not going to cook properly. So you want to put it on sealing and then I'm going to do manual and I'm going to go up to 45 minutes at high pressure. This is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to come up to pressure and then it's going to cook um, for the 45 minutes. So once it comes up to pressure, then the little clock up here will display 45 minutes and it'll start counting down. Once it's done, it's going to beep and it's going to go to the keep warm setting. You're going to need to let it sit here and naturally release the pressure for 15 to 20 minutes. If you quick release, meaning if you just flick this little um, knob open to venting, the meat is going to cool off too quickly and it's going to seize. So when it's when you naturally release an instant pot, there's a little float valve on the back next to the valve. Um, when it drops, that's when all this pressure has released and you're safe to open. So after the short ribs get done cooking, you're going to take them back out of the sauce onto a plate and set them to the side. And you're going to use this arrowroot slurry. So all I did was take two tablespoons of arrowroot starch. Um, it's just like a corn-free cornstarch alternative that you can get online or at Publix. Um, I mixed it with two tablespoons of water and whisked it together. The reason you mix it with water instead of just putting the arrowroot straight into the sauce is because it'll clump up and you'll be stirring forever trying to get it um, smooth. And this is going to thicken the sauce. So once the sauce is thickened, then you're going to add the short ribs back in for a few minutes. And usually while I do that, I uh, go ahead and make the cauliflower puree. So what this is, is some cauliflower rice, and I would suggest buying that uh, free rice in the frozen section of the grocery store because it's going to save you a ton of time. All I did was microwave it until it was tender, and I threw it in the blender with um, some butter, or you can use ghee, some olive oil, salt and pepper, and Italian seasoning, and it's similar consistency to mashed potatoes, and that's what I'm going to serve the short ribs over. Okay, the sauce is thickened, so I'm going to add the meat back in. And I'm going to let it sit there for just a few minutes. And you're done. Serve it, up, serve it over your cauliflower rice or your um, mashed potatoes or whatever you want. And there you go.